Hey, Glenn, how you doing, man? Yeah, hi, Joe. I'm really good, thanks, mate. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing all right. Hey, I've got so uh, I've got an image of the Bubble Nebula. Um, I've got about two nights worth of data so far on it, and I don't like the way that the details coming out on it. Do you mind if I show it to you? Could I share my screen? Oh, yeah, of course, you? mate. Yeah, of course. Show me. Show me. Cool, cool. All right, here. Let me um, let me share my screen with you. So anyway, Glenn, I got the. Uh, I got this image. This is just a couple of nights worth of data. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to blow it up for you so you can see it. And uh, I really like that the way that the bubble and stuff came out right around here and the detail. But then as I move further away, I'm really losing a lot of detail. But I like this color scheme that I'm doing. Of course, it's not true Hubble palette, but I really like the way that the orange and red are out on the outer. And then, you know, it gets a little bit. Um, Orange yeah, it looks, it looks nice, man. I see what you say about the outside bit. It looks, almost looks like it's had too much noise reduction on it or something. Well, and, and you'd think it, that would be the case, but, I mean, look, it's still pretty grainy. I just, I think I need more data. How many hours had you done, Joe? Oh, I think I've got maybe 11 on this. Oh, okay, so you've got quite a bit on it, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. It's Ooh. not bad, but I... What I really think, uh, it needs like 20 or 30 hours, and I don't have enough clear nights to get it all. And I was just wondering if you'd mind, um, if I don't know if you have some already or if you would mind capturing some. And uh, Well, letting... you're lucky you caught me when you did, because I was about to take my RC8 off of my uh, EQ6 and put my 130 PDS on. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think I've forecast a few clear nights coming up i'll be more than happy to leave the rc8 on and um and yeah i'll get some i'll, ca I'll capture some sho wow. on it that'd be cool that'd be awesome actually you know what we should do if, if you if you could do this uh, maybe we should do a video on it well yeah Let's... definitely that'd yeah, be yeah. cool all yeah, right yeah yeah yeah, yeah definitely awesome. yeah we'll do a video yeah why not i think that'd be a great idea um well look you'll have to leave it with me so i can go away and get you some data I'm, I'm going to need a couple of nights. <laughs> oh, yeah, just, yeah. I can't want... just do this and go, there's your data, man. You know what I mean? I need to actually capture it. So, yeah, that'd be cool. I'll um, I'll leave well, the I'll... RCA on and I'll, I'll, I'll get some. Um, what was you taking your subs then? What sort of length were you? I was using 10 minutes because it was kind of a faint target. And that okay. was coming out pretty good. I wasn't blowing out anything too bad. Okay. So. All right, then. Okay, I'll do SHO. Uh, and I'll go yeah, away and capture what I can. I'll let you know what I've got. Okay, All that right? sounds awesome. I'm going to get some more too if I get a clear night in between now and then. And um, Why don't we, I'll call you back in a couple of days. Yeah, I'll, I mean, if, I, if I've got some data, I'll let you know anyway. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll message you and let you know what I've got. All right? Sounds good. Brilliant. Okay then, Joe, I'll, All uh, right. I'll get back to you. All right. Cheers, Thanks. man. Hi Joe. Hey Glenn, how you doing? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you, my man. I've uh, so I've been away. Uh, I've managed to get two clear nights on the Bubble Nebula. Um, the only thing is, my nights are a bit short at the moment, so I've only got six hours. So I got I managed to get seventy-two five-minute subs on S H and O. So. Okay. Um, I, I, it was a, I had a little bit of uh, wispy cloud about and a few other things and the moon was about as well so I went for the five minute subs because I just felt that that would, no that would be the best way and I managed to get 72 in total over the two nights so that's six hours that works out at. that'd be great okay cool what I'm going to do then Joe I'll, I'll get that data over to you are you happy to combine both our data sets together and then send back three masters of just SHO. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you, know, you normally do that, but it, it's actually good. Uh, I can use the practice. Why don't you send them to me 
And uh, actually, I could share my screen if you send them, and uh, we could show our viewers. Because I always get asked that. How, how do you put all these together? Yeah, afterwards? yeah, no, it'd be a really good thing to show. And I think also, and, just if you just show it as a big screen and send me what you record, that'd be brilliant. And I'll add it to my video, and then everyone can see how we put the data sets together. I like it. All right, cool, man. All right, then, well, I'll get these, I'll get these files over to you, and then you send them back, and then, um, well, and then we'll have a chat about what we're going to do with it. Sounds good. Okay then, man. I'll speak to you later. All right. Take care, man. Bye. Hey, Glenn. Hello, my man. <laughs> hey, hey, twice in one day. Look at that. Um, my wife's got... my wife's going to start talking. You do know this. I know. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got the I got all the um, I got all the masters put together and combined in app. And Brilliant. I'm going to send I'm going to send those to you. And I'm also going to send you um, some footage that I recorded of me doing it in APP so that you could put it in your video. I Brilliant. Put it in mine as well. Yeah, thanks, Joe. It's a really, I think it help a lot of people, you know, because it doesn't just work with people putting sets together like us, but it also helps if you've imaged over a few nights and you've used different equipment. So that's the great thing with APP. You can do it if you've used a different camera, different telescope. It it, oh, it yeah. helps put it all together. It's such a great tool. It really is. But uh, yeah, I'll I look like out it. for that. That would be brilliant. So, okay. uh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do with these masters, man? What's the plan? Well, should we show a video of us editing it together? Um, yeah, we could do that. Or uh, um, I tell you what, I tell you what. How about you go away and edit it, and show your workflow or whatever, and I'll do the same. And then let's come back together and show each other what we've managed to make out of it. Yeah, I can do that. You like the idea sounds of that? Good. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. That'd be good. That'd be interesting to see the differences of what we come up with. That'd be cool. Something different because we've been um, doing edits together in these mm. collaborations. Yeah, well, you sometimes see different things in different edits. You know, it's nice to see different versions of something. So we're not doing like a challenge or competition. It's just we're both editing and we're just going to show the differences and kind of highlight. Yeah, I'm thinking it's right more now. to show maybe my workflow, how I go about it. So people that are what, you know, looking on the channel can see. Oh, how I, I like do that. It. I like you that. Know? Okay, I'm, I'll do the same and, cool. and then we can come. That, that way our videos will be a little different too. Yeah, definitely. It'd be good. Yeah, like it'd be that. nice. As, I'll be looking forward to see what you come up with and I'll so make sure I beat you. Oh, no, it's not competition. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what, Joe? Why don't we offer out the data in the in the description and, and let everybody else have a go at editing it as well and see what they come up with? I don't mind. It was good data. I mean, you haven't seen the final masters yet, but uh, yeah. But if we put, they're, they're nice. They're if we nice. put a download link together, for the three the three masters, and then invite everyone who who wants to to edit it, and then what they could do is they could tag us in a in a a link to Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. Ta if they tag yeah, us in, like we'll that. see the images, and we could well we could do a follow up video. We could uh, get the oh, images together. I like that. Okay. And pick our favourites and um, see yeah, what other people can do. do. I mean, we could end up like losing our mantle of good images. You know, everyone could just smash us out of the park. I hope they do. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Okay, that sounds great. Yeah. Oh, what a yeah, it's a great idea. Awesome, Glenn. Well, it's nice to see what other people do anyway, because I, I, you know, I love looking at other images and seeing what people can do, because some people do things that you wouldn't normally think of and do do amazing you know amazing images you well, know maybe we can get the bubble nebula all over social media twitter instagram facebook we'll yeah. just have hundreds of people no millions of people <laughs> <laughs> we'll be infamous <laughs> okay joe that sounds like a really good idea so uh I'm, yep so if you get those up masters over to me i'll get my edit done uh, and then what we need to do is obviously we need to get a link in the description so people can grab hold of those three masters. Yeah. So there'll be an HA, an O3, and an S2 master. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. What's the total hours have we got on that? Do you know? Uh, you I'll say? have to calculate it out. I, 
I haven't calculated it. Okay, let me know, and then okay, and then we'll see. We'll I'll, see I'll send that to you uh, along with the uh, video footage and and the masters. Oh, that'd be brilliant. Excellent. Thanks, Joe. Right, I look cool. forward to this. It's nice, bit of fun. Yeah. Cool. Well, I hope my Same data has, it helps out with the uh, image. It's not the. It's not the. It's not the. Uh, the I, the, I think it has. the most of it, but it's a bit. It. No, it's it looks way better than my original data set. So it's really good data. So this is perfect to share with people. Great. Excellent. I'm glad. All right then, man. Okay. Right. Well, All right. I shall speak to you very soon, and we'll uh, get this. Uh, we'll see what we've got. Sounds good. All right then, Joe. Take okay. care, mate. You too. See you, Glenn. Okay, bye, man. Bye. So Glenn sent me his three masters, and I've got my three masters now. How do we combine them all together? Well, I use APP, and in APP, I click on Light. Um, I go to the to the location where the files are located. In this case, I've got them in a folder called Bubble Nebula. I've um, downloaded Glenn's files and I put Glenn at the end so he's got his hydrogen oxygen and sulfur and here are my hydrogen oxygen and sulfur I called them new because I was able to add more data to them and what we'll do is, is we'll select them all and say open we're gonna apply the filter header tag as uh, RGB mono which will as you'll see in a second um, list them all in what they are only one session it's just saying that these have been previously stacked, which they have been. Do you still want to load them? Yes. And you'll see down here at the bottom of the screen, it's got hydrogen alpha, uh, session one and session one. Again, you see um, I labeled Glenn's as Glenn. And of course, mine don't have my name because I know who I am. So now we've got six lights, and then I'm just going to use, um, we don't need to use a master dark because they've already been calibrated, and as a matter of fact, we don't even need to calibrate. We're going to go to register, and what this is going to do is register all the files together so that all the stars are the same. Now here's where the trick comes in. There's a checkbox here that says same camera and optics. You need to uncheck that because of course these did not come from the same camera or optics. Well actually they did come from the same camera but not the exact same camera. Um, and we're gonna hit start registration. This doesn't take too long but I'll come right back after it's finished. Okay so it finished the registering of all the the fits and it's added reg, reg to them all. Uh, right here you can see uh, where my mouse is reg and if i go and i look in the files it'll all they'll say um reg uh, in the file name as well um, but i don't need to go load the files because they're already loaded here they're selected with the checkbox so now i'm just going to go to integrate and i'm going to tell it to uh, make sure that integrate per channel is on otherwise it will actually integrate them all into one single image and, and we don't want that and um, we could put integrate per session if we had more, but we've only got one session. See, it says session one all the way, so we could just leave that the way it is. We're just going to scroll down, keep the defaults and everything, and hit integrate. Now we're going to call these um, Joe and Glenn. Uh, what was it? Bubble Nebula. Say bubble. Joe and Glenn bubble. Okay. Hit OK, and here we go. It's going to normalize them and then integrate them. And this is how we integrate uh, multiple people's data. Um, really, it's uh, in APP, you could do this in Pixasite as well. It's just a lot more manual uh, work um, doing star line and, and um, a lot of pixel math. So since this does it all for you, you just check these in. I prefer to use this program instead. As soon as this is done, um, it, I will just close this file. I'm going to email Glenn this video that I'm taking right now along with the masters, and then I'm going to open up these masters in PixInsight, and we're going to edit them. And you can see it's finished already. Um, it doesn't take long because there's really nothing to calibrate um, or actually stack because they're just putting the two together and it, it's confusing down here but you see these that say registered well they're not 
need it any longer. What we do have is uh, integration one, two, and three, hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur. And we could just take a quick look. Um, you could see that mine are inside um, because I had a smaller uh, field of view and glens are on the outside, but they're all stacked together. So when we get into picks and sight, I'll probably take a crop right along these lines here and, and crop all this together. So there's the hydrogen alpha, here's our oxygen, and here's our sulfur. And that's it for AstroPixel Processor. Okay, hi everyone, and we're in Pix Insight, and I've got the three masters uh, from Joe on the Bubble Nebula, and these are what you will get uh, to download in the comment section. So this is the exact same data that you can download. So we've got um, a hydrogen alpha, a sulfur two, and an oxygen three. So uh, one of the first things I like to do is just to abbreviate down the three. Um, that's the sulfur two, and last but not least, the oxygen three. I say you haven't got to do this. It's just something I like to do. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm also going to do before I uh, put anything together, I'm going to get. Uh, I've got some uh, shortcuts on the right here. I don't think I've got the one I want. So I'm just going to go processes. I want um, image integration. So what I'm going to do is uh, add files and I'm going to add all three. That's excellent. Leave everything as normal and just make what I would call a superluminance. So let's just get rid of the rejection. And this is uh, all three files together but comes out as a grayscale and that's going to be I'm going to use this as a as a super luminance file so what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to put it in workspace 2 and if I go down here you've got your four workspaces you'll see it's in there and we can work on that later so I don't want to get it mixed up with these <clears throat> Okay, so before I combine these, what I like to do is a linear fit, which I'm going to do here. So we're actually going to use the HA as my reference, and then we just drag this instance on top of the others. And normally when I start, there's normally some uh, rotation or some cropping that needs doing, but that was already done with the masters when they were put together so you don't need to do any of that you can literally just work on these unless you want to change the actual uh, size or field of view you can do that and crop them in but I'm going to leave them as they are at the moment so that's the, that's the linear fit done and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm literally going to stretch them all and then put them together so I'm just going to put this over here just to make it nice and neat and I'm going to call up histogram transformation. I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm just so you can use a screen transfer function for each one. So if we press F12, it clears it down. <coughs> transfer function, drag it onto there. F12 again to get rid of it, and then drag that on top. Good. And then I can shrink that down. That's stretched. Uh, next, I'm going to do the H. So I've got SHO. So again, clear that. I like to refresh that there, clear it again, put that on there, and drag it on top. Cool. And we can then put that up there. So we've got SH, and last but not least, we're going to just refresh that, stretch it, clear it off, drag that onto there, and then drag that onto the image. And that's all three images stretched. Now I've had a few goes at this um, image and I've not been very happy with the colours that have come out and when I've been trying to work on different colours it hasn't come out particularly well. So what I'm going to show you now um, is I'm going to use Pixel Math. 
and I'm going to use an expression editor and what we're going to do and the reason why I use these is I've actually got saved and I'm just going to quickly jump to it and I've got a word document that I've saved <clears throat> with all my astrophotography stuff and it's the 4x x formula um, and this is a formula that somebody went to a lot of trouble of writing and it actually does on certain uh, objects it can give a really nice result so I like to use this so I've written it on a word document because it makes it easier to put it in so I'm going to copy that and then uh, I'm just going to drag that out the way close that and then in the red we can paste and as you can see I've got 03 and HA so it all fits in with that and then on the green I'm just going to copy can't copy that bit just go back this way copy that I can actually close that now because the last bit's very easy and paste and then on the blue it is literally just 03 okay and then we go down here we want new image and we want uh, RGB you need to have one of your files open and then we press the square and it will give you that so I like the colors it gives on this one um, much better than what I was getting just putting the uh, different colors together um, so um, that's quite nice um, we can do some work with that in a moment so let's have a look here we're gonna quickly have a look at uh, process and I'm going to do a dynamic background extraction on this okay, we need to call that up there I might actually see the thing I'm looking for here we go and I normally have uh, the sample radius and I'll make that a bit bigger so that it actually gets a bit more and I'm going to generate and it will put out a load of samples so I'm going to have this I normally do a division and then a subtraction but I think I'm just going to do a subtraction let's have a look and we want to discard the background model and I normally like to replace the target um, so I'm going to do that too right what we want to do now is take these sample points and make sure they're not sitting on any large stars or any major nebulosity okay and then we got a background uh, neutralization and the other thing I'm going to run is a color calibration just leave that on default cool all right let's have a look at that not too bad so we've got a little bit of magenta on the stars there so I'm going to have a look at the script for removing that uh, and it's called correct magenta stars so we'll see it's on 80 at the moment it's not too bad so have a look at that that's excellent it's done a really good job so that's got rid of that magenta there really nice if I go back whoops let's not do that let's go back one you can see the magenta it's removed some other magenta from the picture but overall I do like that and then we can sort some more color out on this when we uh, when we do some work on it so yep I'm quite happy with that at the moment so one of the things I will do is I'm going to call up the curves transformation I'm just gonna have a look at this a second um, so I'm just gonna grab the saturation I'm just gonna push it up a little bit and just see what it does okay, no, it's way too much we don't want that just a little bit there and I want to get the green and just pull some of the green out all right not too much obviously okay we'll go in the higher side of the green 
push the light side back in. Let's just have a look at the changes there. Very subtle. Um, let's just have a look at the red at the moment. What we don't want to do is push too much red into the background. We can always bring the background down, but just a little teeny bit there. Whenever I take green out, it's always a good idea just to give a little bit of RGB back in because it does take the lightness out of it. Uh, and that's quite good there. And then refresh. Okay, I'm going to just stick with that for now. That's our base. We can obviously do some more adjustments with the colour. Um, a lot of the time I like to go into things like uh, Photoshop for, for, for the final sort of little tweaks on colour and that. But at the moment I quite, quite like that. So, And when we add the luminance layer it is going to make some differences. Right, so what I tend to do on the luminance side um, we want a couple of tools to move over so I'm gonna put deconvolution over there um, screen transfer function histogram transformation um, and I'm gonna want I'll actually do it when I get there so if I come over here you see I've got a couple of tools and I want a star mask so uh, process processes <clears throat> right that's good so um, just make sure that this is okay, it's not stretched yet so what we need to do is pull a copy of this off and we need to give this a stretch so we're going to get up the histogram transformation tool we're going to stretch it drag that on there drag that on there that's cool um, what this is going to be is actually a mask that we're going to use in the deconvolution and um, we want to protect the background as much as possible and we just really want the stars and a bit of the nebulosity to be sharpened so what we need to do with this is actually bring the background right the way down so that we've got not too much showing so i'm just going to call up this is called integration clone <coughs> get a preview let's have a look at that okay and what we're going to do is just grab the background here that just bring in the black not crush it but just bring it right the way down apply that let's have a look at that yep that looks good okay let me just close that now so this is going to be uh, decon uh, mask I'll call that okay that's good just going to shrink that down and put that there we're going to need that in a bit okay next we need a star mask so let's have a look at this um, oh before we do that we actually need to stretch this so because this is not stretched so we do need to stretch this or do we stretch it I can never remember always get a bit confused at this point in fact you don't stretch this I stretch afterwards so bear with me right star mask so i'm going to put some noise reduction on there I'll scale it up to 10 don't want any large scale down um let me bring this down a bit uh truncation about mm, 40. um okay let's see what that gives me So I haven't done this for a while um, I, I, I'm not sure if it's going to give me a very good star mask if it doesn't I'll do the same uh, job on the actual decon mask because that's been stretched um, I can't remember if the star mask works on linear data or not 
I know that if you get things the wrong way around on Pixin site, it won't give you anything. So you can see there, there's not much going on. So I'm actually going to delete that. I'm going to call up Decon Mask. I'm actually going to do a Star Mask on that. Let's have a look at this one. Apologies if I'm skirting around a little bit, but um, I don't always do deconvolution. This isn't something I do much, but um, on this image, uh, it does seem to work well. As I say, some images really suit it. Okay, let's see what Star Mask, that's much better. That's more like it. So it's actually gonna protect stuff that we want there. So good, shrink that down. That's my star mask, and that's my decon mask. And the last thing I need is a point spread function. So that's a thing that looks at the star shapes and gives us a correction for the stars. So it looks at the average star shape and gives a correction. Now I've got a script. I'll put a link to this uh, script in my um, comment section so if you want to download it you can it's free but under render you've got here PCF image now sorry PSF image now making a PSF image is actually quite a job um, so it's good to have a tool like this because what it will do is it will average it out it will come up and it will make an image for me okay and that's completed and there you got your average star there you say create and what it does is it gives you, um, let me close that, let's say OK on that now. And then what it gives you is a PCF. A P, sorry, P, why do you keep saying PCF? PSF file. And that can be used in deconvolution. So what we're going to do now is we're going to deconvolute this image. So I'm going to call up deconvolution. And I'm going to just put this back. Um, I leave most things at default, but we don't want to use... Um, the parametric PSF which you can use I like the external one and because we've actually made a PSF we can just drag that in there or you can click this and then you can find the file and load it in that way we're going to click deringing and local deringing and the file we've got for that is our star mask so that can go in there normally find that this is quite high so I'm going to bring this down to about 300 and we'll start there and we'll see how we get on with the ringing. So on the uh, regularization here, um, I'm just going to up the thing. I'll just make a few little changes. That looks good. Okay. Right. So what we need to do now um, is we've got our image there and we need to put um, our mask on there that we made which is our decon mask so we're just going to pull that on there shrink that down and we can click on this to turn off the mask so we've got that and then this little square here gives us what we call preview so I'm going to take a preview of that with the nebulosity in it and I'll take a preview of uh, or even lower click um, with that big star then in that dark area so we've got two previews so let's just have a look at this what we can do now is just pull this onto there and just see what it does there's only 10 iterations so it won't take long um, control shift and Z we can click between the two so not a big difference there so I think we're going to push that up quite a bit more so I'm actually going to go I normally go for around 50, so I'm actually going to put it 250 and see what that does. So the preview lets you get a good idea of what something's going to do and not take too long making it. Let's have a look at this. So I can see a little bit of uh, ringing on the stars there. But that sharpens it up a lot. There's a lot of detail coming out of the bubble there. But I think there's a bit of ringing going on there. Um, let's just take that down, Ooh, I think up, let's take it to 500 and just have a look at that second. So sometimes a little bit of playing about, depends on your stars and on the image you've got. Obviously how well you've made certain things. 
So that's tightening the stars up nicely, bringing out some nice detail in the in the bubble there. That looks good, and it's really shrinking them stars down and bringing out lots of veiny details here. I really like that. That looks good. Okay, so let's just check the dark area, make sure we're not having any issues there. Okay, Control Shift Z. Just sharpening it up. Not a massive difference, but definitely a little bit of an improvement there. I'm just wondering whether to just try a little bit higher on that, just for a second, just to see what it does on here. Is nice that's a good good change I'm just gonna have another look at this one so I do apologize that I'm having a few goes but sometimes this is one of those things where you need to just try a few different settings just to see which one suits your image the best so oh, I like that there's no dark rings man and it is sharpening it up very nicely so I'm gonna stick with that that's good so what I can do now uh, is go to the main and drop that on there and this will take a little bit longer because obviously it's a full size um, image so I'll just let this run through and then I'll join you when it's done okay so that's the uh, convolution I'm just gonna get rid of these previews oops oh well let me delete that one delete Okay, and we can take the mask off. Let's have a look at things. So a lot more detail comes out of that and it really sharpens up everything. I do like that, that's good. What we need to do now is give this a stretch. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to stretch this manually. Uh, this is called integration. I must be changing the name of that in a second so I know what it is. Okay, let's just stretch this up. And bring the background down there. Push up the detail there. starting to bring it out now let's have a look at that okay nice detail in there so this is going to be my luminance layer okay let's just have a look at it it's quite clean not bad at all so what I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to move it to workspace one go back to workspace one shrink that down okay now with this layer it's obviously quite noisy but I don't like to put any noise reduction on it what I'm going actually going to do is I'm going to convolute it so up there and by convoluting it we keep all the color where it's supposed to be but we get rid of all of the noise that's good that's good so it's convolution and then we need the LRGB combination tool and just get RGB out of the way put the luminance in there what I want to do is just see what changes it's going to make to everything. So I'm just going to do that preview there. Um, and I like to 
darken it down a bit and bring out a bit more color let's see what that does oh that's that's nice I like that a lot look at that so sometimes yeah you just make a few changes and it brings you exactly what you want and that's the kind of thing I'm looking for so we'll just get rid of that we'll put comments noise reduction on and then we'll just drag this on top and let PixInsight do its magic So with the uh, lightness slider, if you uh, push up, it will darken down the image and the saturation will obviously bring out more colour. So, okay, I'm really, li I'm really liking that, although I think it needs a little bit more work on the outside. Now, for me, my preferred next stage is actually Photoshop, not actually continuing on with Pixies. So I'm sure you can use other tools to bring this up. You could use, um, if I take the... Uh, actually no I don't want the histogram transformation I could actually work with the trans uh, curves transformation and we could actually just carry on working in here bringing up the brightness um, we could have a look at that just see just bringing up the details bring down the background a bit and we can really sort of get the get things to punch and play with in fact I really like that I don't think I'm actually going to do much more with it um, it doesn't need any noise reduction it's nice and clean it's got loads of detail going on in fact I'm very happy with that um, so I think what I'm going to do is I am going to settle on that as my final image so I'm going to put this up and that is my contribution so let's uh, save as I'm going to save it as, let's see, let's just put it as bubble. SHO, uh, TIFF, another 16 bit TIFF, and I'm also going to save it as a JPEG because sometimes you want to put it on um, social media, you need a smaller file for that, so it's JPEG. Uh, 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 we'll make it a maximum. Okay. And there we have it. So that is my image. So the masters and everything will be in the comments section. And um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you can come up with. So uh, let's see what you've got.